57 of the Riyadh al-Salihin, chapter, it's a new chapter, chapter 26, on page 214 of the English book, titled, Unlawfulness of Oppression and Restoring Others' Rights. Allah, the Uzzalted says, and in Surah Ghafir, verse 18, translation of the meaning, there will be no friend nor an intercessor for the zalimun, the polytheist and the wrongdoers, who could be given heed to. Allah SWT also says in Surah Al-Hajj, verse 71, and for the zalimun, the wrongdoers, polytheists, and disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, there is no helper. <coughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. The author, he brought us a chapter which is a great chapter, chapter for the Muslim needs to understand properly, and that is two things here. He said, tahrim al-dhulm, the prohibition of dhulm, and we're going to explain what is dhulm, and the other one is the command to settle those injustice, so something had done or somebody had done, or someone done an injustice, then we're supposed to settle that injustice and to bring the haqq. Um, this, as I said, this chapter talks about a very important topic. Zulm in Arabic means deficiency. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Surah Al-Kaf, Kilta al-Jannatayni atat ukulaha, wa lam tadlim minhu shay'a. When he talked about the two Exa the example of the two men, one is Allah Azza giving garden, one is not giving a garden, the gardens he got two actually, and both gardens they brought their fruits. Walam tanqus did not make naqs. Walam tadlim minhu shay'a. Tadlim here means tanqus, that means did not de deprive, did not decrease. So Allah Azza gave these two orchards full fruits, there was no deduction, no reduction, no decrease. So the naqs is the equivalence of a dhulm. And a naqs here in dhulm, it means either the person dare himself to do something which is not permissible, and that is we call it doing haram. Or he is falling short from fulfilling an obligation. This is the dhulm. Either you are transgressing by doing haram, or you're falling short by abandoning something which is compulsory upon you. And a dhulm also is being interpreted as to place something not in the right place. And this is prohibited upon Allah. Allah will not place something which is not in the right position. Allah Azza wa Jal will not make equal between two things which are different. Because it's a dhulm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reward the sinner and at the same time punish the obedient. We have to understand that. Is there any Muslim would say such a thing? Yes. There are even sects like the Asha'ira. The Asha'ira, they separate between the power of Allah and what Allah's will and between the justice of Allah. So they say Allah is, has the right to do whatever he likes. He has the right to put the person who is in sinner into paradise and the person who is a mushrik, and the person who is obedient to be in the helfa. Even some of them dared themselves to say something more. To put Muhammad in helfa, and to put the shaitan in paradise. And that is, as I said, this is not our aqidah. This is aqidah is false aqidah. Because we do not separate between the power of Allah, and the will of Allah, and also that is the justice. Allah does not. Uh, accept dhulm and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make two things which are different to be equal Allah azza wa will not put someone who deserves the hellfire to be in paradise and vice versa if what he had done of course is shirk he will not go to paradise because Allah azza wa he said ya ibadi remember the hadith we talked about before hadith abi dhar ya ibadi inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu muharraman baynakum fala tadhalamu the hadith of Abi Idris al Khawlani. We talked about the hadith in the beginning from our book here. That is, all people, Allah says, that is, I have made dhulm to be haram upon me. It's, it's not allowed for me to make dhulm. He himself says that to himself. And I made it also prohibited amongst you. So the dhulm, which is not allowed to be thought of to be Allah will do, that is to make something or put somebody not in the right position. And this dhulm is three categories. 
category number one, which is the category of dhulm, which Allah will not leave alone. He has to discuss it. Dhulm, that he will not, uh, it, will, it will be discussed. And the second type of dhulm is the dhulm which will not be forgiven. And the third dhulm, that is the dhulm that is under the will of Allah, it will be forgiven. So the one which is can be forgiven is the dhulm between you and your Lord. You've done a sin, whether it's minor or major, it's between you and your Lord. And Allah might forgive you, even if you did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as it is not shirk. The second one which you will not be forgiven, and that is the shirk. That's the type of dhulm. So one dhulm, which is between you and your Lord, that sins less than the shirk, and that is under the will of Allah to be forgiven, even if you did not repent. Second type of dhulm, which is absolutely forbidden to be forgiven. Allah he says, Allah does not forgive any person who makes shirk with Allah, which is the dhulm. And Allah will describe this dhulm as to be الظلمات, the worst of the dhulm. Ya bunay, la tushrik billah. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Luqman, he said to his son, O oh son, do not make shirk with Allah. A polytheism. For verily shirk is the greatest of all dhulm. The worst of all dhulm. The third type which Allah does not leave and he will discuss is the dhulm between the people. So if you've done dhulm to somebody, Allah will not leave it. It's not going to be left alone. So if you did not settle it here, the settlement will be in the day of resurrection. And the settlement is not dirham and dinar. The currency is there, not money. It is the currency, hasanat and sayyat. So if you did dhulm to somebody, and then you did not settle it, then on the day of resurrection, this person who is being uh, dealt in, uh, unjustly, you did not, you have oppressed him, he will take his right by taking hasanat from you. You don't have hasanat, you're a bad person, he will drop from his evil, from his sins, onto you until you drop into the hellfire. We will discuss, inshallah, later on in hadith 218, not today, of course, um, that is the hadith, Atadruna man il muflis. Prophet is asking the companions, do you know who is the bankrupt? They said, Messenger of Allah, the bankrupt amongst us, the one who's got no property, no uh, furniture, no things. So he said, no, the person who is called bankrupt in my ummah is the one who comes on the day of resurrection with salah and siyam and zakah. MashaAllah, he's got hasanat, bags of hasanat, full of hasanat, he's rich. But he comes while he had spoken ill about this. He had backbitten this, he had still slandered this, and he had shed the blood of so-and-so, and he had devoured the wealth of so-and-so. So so-and-so will come and take from his hasanat, and the other person will take from his hasanat. Until his hasanat is finished, then they will drop their sayyat onto him, and he will be dropped into the hell. This is the bankrupt of the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he had forbidden dhulm with all three types. All these types of mention, whether it's shirk, whether it's less than shirk, whether it's a dhul between you and the people, then it is all of it is to be prohibited. Allah when he says, The dhalim will not have a companion, a friend, nor he will have a person who will intercede. He's a dhalim for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that the dhalim, he will not have a, a close person, a relative, that he will intercede for him, or he will benefit with them, they will be cut off. Second verse, min nasir. Also Allah Jalil says that the Zalimun, they will not have helpers. min nasir. Helpers, there will be no helpers for those who are Zalim. As for the Hadith, Hadith Abi Dhar, which we have mentioned in Hadith 1, 1, 1, 111. That's the Hadith, the first Hadith. It's a long Hadith. Now we're going to the first Hadith in this chapter, which is 203 Jabir, radiallahu anh. Hadith 203 Jabir bin Abdullah, radiallahu anh, reported the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Beware of injustice, for impression will be darkness on the day of resurrection. And beware of stinginess, because it doomed those who were before you. It incited them to shed blood and treat the unlawful as lawful in Muslim. Right. So this hadith from Jabir radiallahu an is saying that the Prophet of Allah said, Ittaqudun. That means you have to keep away as much as you can from making dhulm. Because the dhulm, as we said, is uh, forbidden and it is sinful. Then the Prophet of Allah said, فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمَ ظُلُمَاتِ This dhulm, 
will turn into dhulumat. The word in Arabic will, is similar. Dhulm, dhulumat. In English, it is not. Dhulm here is, means oppression. Dhulumat means darkness. There is no common letters between them. But in Arabic, dhulm, oppression, injustice, tyranny. And the and as well, dhulumat means darkness. Dhulm will turn to dhulumat. In English, that is, injustice will turn into darkness. As I said, there's no sort of synchronizing letters in between in English. It dhulm because it says it shows the eloquency of the Prophet of Allah that it will turn into darkness. This is shows that the things which are can be felt in this dunya on the day of resurrection, uh, sorry, the things which are in the dunya which are not not, not materialistic, it will turn into materialistic into the hereafter. The thing which is not materialistic is dhulm. You will make an injustice. It's, you can't touch injustice. But it will turn to something, watch, materialistic, that you could see, that is, that is darkness. On the bridge, where you need the light to cross the bridge, and there is no light. Some of the lights will be, mashallah, you could see everything. That's the light of the person who's a believer. Some of them, the light is just short. Some of them even, the light will not go as far as his finger. Can't see more than that. Some of them, total darkness. And the... Uh, more darker you have, the more chance you're gonna go into hell. Then he says, "What the So he prohibited zulm. He warned against zulm, and also he said that zulm will turn into zulumat, darkness. Then he said, "Be aware of shuh. Keep away from shuh. Shuh means stinginess. Is that the translation of it? Yeah, stinginess. Yeah. Stinginess. Stinginess, but in, in English is not really the same word as shuh. Stinginess is bukhl. That's the translation in Arabic. Uh, here the shuh means stingy and keen to gain the money. Two things here. You're stingy and at the same time keen to accumulate money. This will lead the person to gain the money regardless of the source. Halal, haram, robbing the person, killing the person, huh? or selling halal way. It doesn't matter for it. That's shuh. Shuh is, as I said, number one, stinginess. As Allah says, these people, they prevent the help to the people who are in need of help. And the same thing, he is keen to gain the money. And that's why the shuh is very bad. And he combined here the shuh with the dhulm to say that those things, tyranny, injustice, with this stinginess, which is explained, as I said, with keenness to gain the money, it will be led to lead to spread of the crime. What crime is talking about? Safaku dima'ahum. The bloodshed. And also, astahallu maharimahum. Made the, this is called incest. Huh? What did you say? Tahallu maharim is incest. Meaning that you're making haram halal. You are ma making uh, haram halal. So you could fornicate with a'udhu billah. Somebody who is not, you're supposed to be uh, uh, making intimacy with him. Or also to make the alcohol to be halal. Astahallu maharimahum. Al-dhulm wa shuh from the Akbar al-Kabar, from the major sins. And because, as I said, the shuh would lead. Listen here to the hadith of the Prophet Sinfani min al-Nas lam arahu maqad. This kid just came to me just now from our Shaykh Mashura, rahimah, habibahullah. Sinfani min al-Nas lam arahu maqad. Prophet said, two types of people, I did not see them yet. Qawmun ma'ahum, people who got salt, whip, ka'adna bil baqar, like the tail of the cows. And the other categories, Nisa'un, Kasiyatun, Ariyat, Ru'usuhun, Nakasi, Matil Bukhtil Ma'ila. Women who are dressed, not dressed, naked, half naked, and their heads is like a hump. Ma'ilatun Mumilat, they sway when they walk. These are the ones who will not taste or smell the fragrance of paradise. Even the fragrance of paradise can be smelt by this is of 40 years, as the Prophet Allah said. Here, our Shaykh al I'm sure used to say, there's two things here in this hadith have led to this crime. And this crime led to this disaster. First, a dhulm siyasi. Second, a dhulm al-akhlaqi. Dhulm, injustice, siyasi, politics. Where is it? The one people who did not see them whipping the people. These are the leaders, the ones who are confidant, the ones who are close to the leaders. They whip the leaders out, you know, the, the police, policing who are the tyrant leaders. So this is the facade, the corruption of the politics. Second one, the corruption of the manners. And this is manifested into what? The women who are kasiyat They're dressed, but they're not dressed properly. 
Kasiyatun Arya. They are dressed, but yes, they are naked. Subhanallah, how could they be dressed and naked? Well, you could see it later. You could see it. MashaAllah, sister, she is putting a hijab, but look at the hijab of hers. So tight, some of the hair showing. Even that jilbab, now she got a waist to really zap it, zip it onto her waist. So you could see that boom, 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 like this. And this is hijab. Have you seen that? <laughs> now you could see exactly the shape of that woman. So the jilbab is supposed to be what? Baggy. She said, make it like zip it from the middle. Or zap it, you call it zap, zap it. Shh. And they make Allah Musta'an. This is Kasiyat Ariyat. The scarf, mashallah, it was like this tablecloth, as big, big as this one, wrapped for the sister. Now, I would say just that width, uh, she wraps it. She, when she walks, some of her back shows, some of her shoulders shows, some of this shoulder, true or not. That's what is happening, slowly, slowly. It's shrinking. It's not by the washing machine shrinking. They are shrinking it. It's not the washing machine shrinking that's so but it's actually shrinking slowly, slowly until you'll find no hijab. Allah <laughs> Mustam. Kasiyatun Ariyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa man yuqashuha nafsi, he who prevents the stinginess to read to himself, fa'ulaika humul muflihun. Those are the successful. That's what it means now. Wa man yuqashuha nafsi, fa'ulaika humul muflihun. Uh, that means the one who does not prevent the shuh to go to himself, then he is from the mufsidun. He is from the unsuccessful. He's from the failure. The muflihun is the one who prevents shuh to come to them. The one who does not prevent that and they have the stinginess, then there are people who are going to be a, the opposite of muflihun. That is, opposite of success is failure. Okay. Coming now to the following hadith, which is hadith. Okay. 204. By the way, what is the opposite of shuh? Karam. And what is that? Generosity. Person who's generous. Person who's even, he's poor, but yet he's generous. The generosity of this person is in my mind. The person who is the reason behind so many people embraced Islam in Romania. This person who and his wife, not disbelievers, Christians most likely. Because most of the Romanian are Christians or agnostic, whatever. So he goes to Turkey for his holiday. And he is in a village and he wants to go to a special place, specific hotel. So he's got lost. So he finds a villager, person, normal person. And he points to him, you know, what is this address? So he started speaking to him in a way that, you know, yes, but now it's dark, too late. You should really come and have some dinner. This is what the Muslims, they do. They will not say to you, oh, by the way, do you like to eat with us or maybe in the hotel or the restaurant Bata? We don't do that. This is shame. We will take the person in our place and give him the food. That's how the people, they get together. These days, the person doesn't want to show you even his address. Doesn't want to tell you his address. He doesn't want to come to his house. Allah al That's what's happening. So this uh, person, he invites him, and then he sees that he's got his mother, his wife, and he's got a bunch of children. And then he give him food, supper, him and his wife, and then he says to him, you sleep here, we're going to sleep in the other room. And he said, it's dark, I can't see anything, except we went inside, so we slept there, and he left. And we thought that he left to the next room. That's what they thought. Following day, wake up, and because everything light, he can't see except for one room. He opens the door and the guy and his mother and his wife and his children sleeping underneath the tree outside. Even if it's the summer, it's a bit coldish as well. They got the cold and everything and this has struck this person. So the first one he said, are you crazy? Well, the only person who can do it is crazy. He said, no, I'm not crazy. He said, I'm a Muslim. When he said this word, there was light on the face of that person. He said, he, this is described by the man who embraced Islam now. He, I saw a light in his face when he said, I'm a Muslim. So he said, what, what is the, how can you, what is the, can I, he said, I can't speak properly, but there is Quran. You buy it from shop. So he said, I bought it. Me and my wife, in two months, we read it. And we embraced Islam. How many Islamic centers were open now in Romania? Because of this person who had embraced Islam. And it's actually the whole reward as well will be called, duplicate reward will be given to that one villager who is illiterate and lettered. He can't read or write maybe that much. 
but because of the generosity. Generosity, Akhwari, wins the heart of the person. 204, please. Adif 204, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi, alayhi wa sallam said, on the resurrection day, the rights will be paid to those to whom they are due, so much so that hornless sheep will be, will be retaliated for by punishing the horned sheep which broke its horns. Allahu Muslim. Prophet said, Let to al hukuk. You have to fulfill the obligation and the rights on the day of resurrection. So if you've done something wrong to a person, you've deprived them from you've robbed them from something, you have to pay full on the day of resurrection. And the Prophet of Allah is making an oath without using the word of oath. He's not using by Allah, by the one who's in my mind and soul. He's using the word the latter lamb, la. It's in Arabic, la tu addun, that's like a qasam. It's an oath. And Allah's messenger, he is a truthful, he doesn't need to make an oath. So why did he make an oath? To show that it's permissible to make an oath for the hereafter, for the akhirah. Not to make an oath for the dunya. Not to make an oath, for example, regarding selling an item. Because you will deprive your sale from what? From barakah. Al-halifu man faqatun li sil'ah man haqatun li barakah. Prophet he said that to sell an item with an oath, that's amongst the Muslims, because the disbelievers, they don't care whether you make an oath or not. It doesn't make a difference for them. But between Muslims, he would start to believe you if he said, Wallahi, I'm selling you a good car. It will work, mashallah, it's very fast. As soon as you take the car, it's an, an old banger. It's all sorts of problems in it. But because you have made an oath by Allah, that guy trusted you. So yes, you'll sell the item, but the barakah will go. That money, you'll find it very disappeared, evaporated from your hands, you had no barakah in it because you have gained it in the wrong way, which is making an oath. But making an oath here for something to do with the akhirah, something which is important. So the Prophet Wasallam he said to Mu'adh, Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. Mu'adh ibn Jabal is with him. He said, by Allah, O Mu'adh, I love you. He said, by Allah, he made an oath. He was not required to make an oath of the Prophet of Allah. But here is a very important issue to show. Emphasize. I love you for the sake of Allah, ya Mu'adh. Imagine the Prophet saying to you, I love you by the sake of Allah. Subhanallah. You are in Jannah straight away. Guaranteed. Inni la uhibbuk. So here coming back, the Prophet he said, La tu addun. You have to fulfill the rights on the day of resurrection to his people on the day of resurrection. So much so that. The one, you know the sheep? You've seen a sheep, yeah? one who's got horns, one who's got no horns. Of course, the one who's got horns is you know, powerful, muscled. So he wants to show him a bang to the one which is not muscled, got no horns, and he'll poke his eyes. Or, well, watch that. On the day of resurrection, that one who's got no horns will take justice from the one who's got horns. And that's reality. It's not a, a, a metaphorical speech. No, 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 no. This is actual. It will take place. This animal hasn't been taught like us that it's haram to hurt somebody without any reason. We have been taught that. The sheep was not having classes. Didn't have classes haram to go and poke the other sheep. You've got horns. It's got no horns. Fear Allah, sheep. Huh? But it will take justice. And you know what happened? We, if we succeed in the day of Rashi, we go to Jannah. Don't succeed, we go to what? To hell. What happened to the animals? They turn into what? Dust. So the justice will take place, yet the outcome for both is going to be, they will turn into dust. All animals. So Allah Azzawajal, He will gather the animals on the day of Rashid. He said, وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ And behold, when the beast will be what? Summoned, gathered on the day of resurrection. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, not a single animal which is on the earth, or a bird which flies by its wings, except it is nations like you. You are a nation, isn't it? Tribes, nations. Same thing with the animals, they are nations. Huh? The tribe of the camels, the tribe of the lions, the tribe of the camels, they are nations. They will be summoned on the day of resurrection before the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and justice will take place. So if a uh, 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 let's say hyena bit somebody, uh, another rabbit or something for no reason, it will be justice as well. And then they will turn into dust. So you are an oppressor. What do you think about yourself when you make dhulm? If you see that that sheep 
will take justice from that sheep. So what about you? This is to show that how justice is going to be. The scale of justice on the day of resurrection. Ya Allah. Now, that hadith tells us all the rights will be gone to the people who have deserved the rights. Even jinn and ins. You know, the jinn together, they're going to be as well uh, accounted. So if you've transgressed even against the jinn or jinn transgressed against you, there will be justice. I understand how the jinn transgressed against a human being by possession. But how can the human being... You know, make transgression against the jinn. Anybody else give me an example? Yes. Ah, yalla. Going to the toilet by the, not saying bismillah. Am I harming the jinn? Huh? So, well, by the way, uh, going to the toilet, say, Allah, my name is the shaitan. I want to harm the shaitan, actually. I want, I love to harm the shaitan, but not the way of that Bedouin man. You remember the Bedouin's man story? He was eating chili food, salty food, and that's saying Bismillah. And then he runs to the water and says Bismillah. What are you doing? He said, I'm torturing the shaitan. How? When I eat chili food and salty food, no say Bismillah, he eats with me. <laughs> then he gets choked. So I go run to the water, say Bismillah. He can't have water. And then he is tortured. What a stupid man he is. <laughs> this is in the book called Akbar al Hamqa wal Mughaffali. Stupid people. I don't know, they don't know how to work. They think the shaitan, when he eats chili, is going to have the same thing like us. Allah, ya akhi, miskeen, you are. Taib, how? Yes. Yes. Without saying bismillah. Say bismillah. Throwing hot water outside. Without saying bismillah, you might burn the jinni. You have transgressed against them. But there's one in the hadith. Prophet ﷺ, he did not allow us to make a stinger with what? With bones. Because the bones is what? The food of our brethren. He said, Zadu ikhwanikum min al-jinn. The food of your brethren from the jinn. The jinn is our brothers. The Muslims, of course. <laughs> so there are, so each bone, I'm talking about, you know, like chicken, Kentucky, and all that bones, you know, chicken. You're eating the chicken, you're eating the meat, putting outside. The jinn will come, say, Bismillah, it'll become chicken kantak again. And become rooster again. Subhanallah. So you're not allowed to make stinja with it because it's their food. So you are transgressing against them. The jinn will take justice from you. Why did you pollute my food with your poo? <laughs> now, Prophet Salami, one day, he was making a stinja. Abu Huraira brought him a bone. And a stone and a dung. You know what's a dung? The animal's stool from a donkey. Prophet of Allah returned back, pushed back to him, the dung and the bone. And he left what? The stone. And he made stinger with what? The stone to clean his backside, you know? So the stone. He did not use the bone, nor he used that dung. He used the stone. Pipe. If the mudloom, the injust, the person who has been under injustice, he had made a dua, and the Prophet of Allah said, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, ittaqi al-dhulm, taqi da'wat al-mudloom, be careful regarding the supplication of the one who has been dealt unjustly, you've been done to him. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ The supplication of this person who is under injustice, if he makes dua, there is no barrier between it and Allah. So if this person who is under injustice, he made a dua and Allah fulfilled his dua, oh Allah get revenge from this person who done boon to me, then on the day of resurrection you will have no right. That's it, you've taken what? You've taken your hukuk. This is your rights, you've taken in the dunya. But if you're patient, you did not do anything, you did not forgive him yet, on the day of resurrection you will take what? Your justice. So either you accept your justice here and you make a dua and then Allah, if he fulfilled your dua, then there is nothing for you in the day of resurrection to take from that person. You're taking justice. But if you did not make a dua, and, or if you made a dua and dua was not fulfilled, justice will take place on the day of resurrection. Finally, the final du hadith, inshallah, 205. Tadal. Hadith 205, Ibn Umar reported, we were talking about the farewell pilgrimage without knowing 
what was it when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also present. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and recited and the praise and glorification of Allah. He then gave a detailed account of the Dajjal and said, every prophet sent by Allah had warned his people against his mischief. Nuh alayhi wasalam warned his nation and so did all the prophets after him. If he, i.e. a Dajjal, appears among you, his condition will not remain hidden from you. Your Rabb is not one-eyed, but a Dajjal is. His right eye is protruding like a swollen grape. Listen, Allah has made your blood and your properties as inviolable as this day of yours, i.e. the day of sacrifice. In this city of yours, i.e. Makkah, in this month of yours, i.e. Dhul Hijjah, listen, have I conveyed Allah's message to you? The people replied in affirmative. Thereupon, he said, O oh Allah, bear witness. And he repeated it thrice. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, concluded, "Do not revert after me as infidels, killing one another." In Al Bukhari. Right. Uh, first of all, before I go to the talk of this hadith, which is the gel, we want to understand here the Prophet of Allah at the end of this hadith. He said, "Ala inna haram al ala inna Allah Allah verily had made haram upon you, dima akum your blood wa amwalakum your property, and." A'radikum, and also your A'rad. And this hadith was not mentioned in the A'rad. You just said, Allah me prohibited what? Your blood? Uh, your blood uh, and the property? Your, your blood, your properties, as inviolable okay. as his day Allah, it's messenger. In another hadith, he adds a third one. A'radikum. Your honor. And you remember we said zulm is a three types. One, that Allah will forgive, which is between you and your Lord, sins which is less than the shirk. Second one, Allah will not forgive, which is the shirk. Third one, Allah will not touch. And that is, he will deal with it. And that is the dhulm between you and the people. And the dhulm between you and the people rotate around three, three things. That is either you're gonna shed his blood, injure him, or you're gonna confiscate him, take his money, or you're gonna backbite him, uh, or you could fornicate him, or what you know, or it's A'rab. A'rab means you are either speaking ill of him or you are uh, raping the person or doing something haram to do with fornication. So it's either money or property or the A'rab. These are the three things that the person can do injustice to another person. And the Prophet of Allah here emphasized the importance of those three and the importance of the rights of the others and not to make dhulm to the others by saying that the sacredness of the money and the sacredness of the property of your brother, sacredness of the honor of your brother, the sacredness of the blood of your brother, is like the sacredness of this day. What was the day? What was that day here? The day that the Prophet ﷺ, he said. Well, here, the Prophet of Allah, at the beginning of this, he's in Hajjat al Wada. Hajjat al Wada means what? The farewell Hajj. This farewell Hajj was called farewell because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, to the companions, Maybe I will not meet you after this year. And he did not. Prophet Allah said, Maybe I will not see you after this year. And the Prophet Allah died after that. So it was the farewell hajj. That's why it's called the farewell. It was the only hajj and the last hajj of the Prophet of Allah. And in this hajj, Prophet of Allah, he made two khutbas. Khutbah on the day of Arafah and khutbah on the day of Al-Eid, the following day. I, I, I am your khatib this Jumu'ah. I will be talking about the first 10 days of Al-Hujjah, inshallah. That's why I did not talk about it this, this evening. So I'm going to be, my talk is going to be about these days, bi So the, the Prophet of Allah emphasized in these two khutbahs, these three things. He asked the companions, do you know which day it is? Companions, you know, they're not on drugs, they know which day it is. They came from Hajj, they know it's the day of Arafah, the day Allah sets people from the hellfire. But maybe they thought Allah's Messenger is going to give it another name. Allah and His Messenger knows best. He said it is the day of Arafah. Another hadith is the day of Al Abha, it's the following day. You know which 
It's actually uh, they, they, they will up high. It was the following day, the following khutbah. Second question was, do you know which month it is? Everybody knows it's the month of Dhul Hijjah. But they thought maybe the Prophet of Allah is going to give it a different name. He said, Allah and Rasulullah, Allah and His Messenger knows best. He said, this is the month of Dhul Hijjah. Do you know which place it is? They know they are in Mecca. They are in Mina, which is the province of Mecca. So Allah and Rasulullah, maybe he's going to give it a different name. He said, you are in Mecca. And he said, verily, your blood and your property and your honor is sacred upon you like the sacredness of this day and the sacredness of this month and the sacredness of this city. So the sum of times has got sacredness. Some months have got sacredness. Some call it holy months. Some places have got sacredness, like Mecca. Allah called it the trustworthy Balad al Amin. Prophet وسلم, then when he said this, he said, Allah al Balagd. The khutbah, as I said, mentioned twice the day of Arafah the following day, word for word, word for word. The khatib these days, if he repeats the khutbah from one Jum'ah to the following Jum'ah, he's boring. He just mentioned the khutbah last week. Huh? And the, the Prophet Allah, he mentioned the same khutbah what? Following day. It's word for word, not extra. Word for word. To emphasize the importance. Allah al Balagd, did I convey my message? So the Prophet وسلم, he had conveyed the message. And he clarified the message. And he did not hide anything from the deen that we need to know about in order to gain paradise. He said, yes, messenger of Allah, you have conveyed. And he, with his finger like this, Allahumma fashhad. Allahumma fashhad. Three times, Allahumma fashhad. Pointing his index towards the heaven. That's when the person calls Allah, he goes to the heaven. He doesn't go down, does he? Uh, and then he goes to the down. Oh Lord, be a witness. That they said that I conveyed the message. And then the Prophet of Allah warned him about something that he's already been told that is going to take place. He said, Wayhakum. Waylakum. Three times. Woe to you. Wayhakum. That means this thing is I'm going to tell you, be careful of. What is it? La tarji'u. Badi kuffar. Do not return after me as kuffar. He Translation was infidels. I don't like the word infidels. Kuffar, disbelievers, better. Disbelievers, smiting the neck of one another. That means killing one another. Did the companions kill one another? Yes or no? no. Yes. We have Marakat Sufi. We have Marakat Al Jamal. If you're going to implement this hadith like this, you're going to say the companions are what? Kuffar. Because he said, don't return after me, Kuffar. So we learn here the very important things that some of the sins are to be labeled as kufr, but it's not the ultimate major kufr. Do you understand that? Some of the sins, they could be kufr, called kufr. Listen to this hadith. There is no deen, no Islam, for the person who's not got no trust, he's not trustworthy. How many Muslims who are not trustworthy? So many, many. Do you say that they are kufar? They've got no deen Islam. That's why we to understand the hadith, otherwise we're going to become from a khawarij. So we have to understand the word al-kufr and kufr that can be given to some of the sins, but it doesn't mean that this kufr that will take you outside the fold of Islam. It is from the major sins, yes. So some of the people, they make major sins, they will not be kufar unless he makes this sin to be what? Halal. So he said fornication is halal. He doesn't need to fornicate to become kafir. Do you understand that? Yeah. Person said alcohol halal. He could be not alcoholic. He doesn't even drink whatsoever. But his saying like this, it will take him outside the fold of Islam. Because he made it halal. But the person who drinks and he's a Muslim, he doesn't say it's halal. He's weak. He's drinking because he's addicted. His iman is not that full. But it can't be kafir. Remember that person? He used to call him Himar, donkey. Huh? Companion. He used to get what? Drunk. When they come to the Prophet of Allah, they beat him up. He's drunk. They beat him up. But one companion, he said, Akhzak Allah. It means Allah put you in hell. Disgrace to you. The Prophet said, no, 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 no. 
Don't be helpers to Iblis, the shaitan, against your brother. For verily, he loves Allah and his messenger. Oh, oh. A drunkard who loves Allah and his messenger. Well, it is true. Al-Walid ibn Uqbad ibn Mu'ayt. At the time of Uthman, he led the companions. The time of the reign of the Khilaf of Uthman. He led the companions. And he was drunk. He got drunk. This shows that some weakness. And he led them in Fajr. Instead of two, he made them what? Four. Allahu Akbar, they follow him. Because he doesn't know how many rak'ah. After he finished, shall, shall I give you extra two? <laughs> that's it. And that's when Uthman heard about him. He lashed him. For the what? For being drunk. But a person being drunk, he's a kafir. That's doesn't, it's not correct. Infer, that's not a correct equation. Today, I mentioned the story of my, when I've seen the person who's outside there. Remember the masjid, he was drunk and he came to the masjid and I saw him. I was passing by a, a pub that's in Manchester. The, the, the masjid is next to the pub. Uh, and, and I passed and I saw a person with my eyes. I know this person. Ah, his name is Abdullah. <laughs> I know him. He's from such an ex ZY country. Allah Mustahan. I couldn't really look properly with him, but I know. So I went to the masjid. Maghrib uh, prayer, I remember it. And there he was. There he was. So I thought, maybe I'm wrong. I said, Abdullah, didn't I see you there? In the... He said, yes, so what? I'm drinking haram, but I'm, I want to pray. Do you want to prevent me from praying? He said, no, 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 mashallah, you're muahid. You are muahid, mul muahideen. Mashallah, I can't prevent you. You could pray. So what do we say? Maybe his prayer will stop him from drinking. He acknowledges that he's doing haram. But I want to come to pray. If you prayed drunk, your prayer will not be accepted unless you know what you're doing. It's not every person drunk is the ultimate drunkness. Someone drunk, they don't know, they know what you're talking about. But if you're drunk so much that you don't know what you're talking about, your prayer is invalid. But drunkness does not invalidate your wudu. Okay? So this, uh, there's a story here just today, I've heard it, just today, from a brother who is trustworthy. He said he was giving da'wah in uh, uh, in region, is it called Park? Is it called uh, Hyde Park? Hyde Park, Speaker's Corner. Uh, and uh, no, actually, no, not Hyde Park. He says Chavalga Square. I don't really, I'm against people giving down there. Chavalga Square, he said the one during the night, naked and all of that. Uh, and what happened is that they, they stayed until the Fajr, and there was a person who came out from XZY country, what do I want to call countries here, and he prayed with them the Fajr. And after he prayed, he came to this person, the Dain, he said to him, uh, is my prayer accepted? He said, what are you asking? He said, I'm drunk. <laughs> Subhanallah, but he drank, he prayed. He said to him, well, I don't any, have any proof to say that drunkenness will invalidate you. Well, do you know what you're saying? He said, nah, but I got, I drank. He said to him, no problem and everything. Then he, after that, he pulled out after the little 50 pounds, he put it in the dawah pot. 50 pounds, put it in the dawah pot. He said, no, you don't have to. He said, no, no, just give it. I want to give it the dawah. Do you know how much, how much Sheikh is calling him? How much Sheikh I have lost in the casino? You know, there's a casino next to, to that uh, place. You know how much is lost? He said, what? He said, 56,000. 56,000 in one night. He lost in that casino. Subhanallah. Allah mustaan. This is where the Muslim's money is wasted. Allah was down. Right. Coming back to the hadith, as I said, the story here of the Dajjal we're going to talk about. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, not a single Prophet has been sent. Uh, yeah, just before we go, uh, we leave this very important topic. Do not label people fighting with each other, doing, doing certain sins to be kuffar. That's important. Now here, the Prophet of Allah is warning against the Dajjal. He said, after he had praised Allah, he said, Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu. This is the Khutbah al-Hajjah. Then he mentioned al-Masih al-Dajjal. Masih al-Dajjal is wrong to say the Antichrist. This is not right. Masih means the Mamsuh al-Ain. His eyes being, he can't see with it. That's Masih. Al-Dajjal, the, the liar. 
one of the fitness, great fitness, the greatest of all fitness until the day of resurrection, the Masih al-Dajjal. All prophets, they warn their people against the Dajjal. And the prophets, they warn their people against the Dajjal, and they know for a fact that the Dajjal will not appear in their time. Do you understand that? And now we are 100% that the Dajjal is not going to come in our time. Because the Dajjal has to have introductions before that. Those introductions did not come. This, there is something called Al-Mahdi. Al-Mahdi has to come out. There's no Mahdi yet. Uh, the Mahdi Rafidah is different. Mahdi Shia. This is, this is not the proper Mahdi. The one who's hidden in the tunnel. Well, it doesn't exist anyway. <laughs> He's been hiding for 1,000, I don't know how many, 182 years. Allah al mustan He's hiding from huh, the police of the Abbasi. <laughs> the police of the Abbasi. Yet, he's been called upon to do huge things that only Allah can do them. So how can you call upon him to do huge things? Yet he's scared in the towel from the Al-Abbasi, short Al-Abbasi. <laughs> the, the police cup from the Abbasi, the time of Abbasi. He was scared. But yet he's powerful. To call upon him to go, please do this for me, kill that person for me. That's what they do. And people got no mind. Brainwashed. This Dajjal, we know for a fact, is not going to come. So what is the point of warning against him? He's not going to come in my time. Why is the Prophet going to be warned against him in the time of the companions? The Prophet of Allah talked about the Dajjal so much that they thought he's jumping now into the forest and coming out of the forest. He just went to the palm trees and he came out of the palm trees. He's telling them so much about him that he's like so close, he's coming to us. Because the Prophet of Allah he said that the Dajjal will not come out until the people who are on the pulpits, Khutbah Jum'ah, they don't take up the Dajjal. So we are delaying the appearance of the Dajjal. Number two, we need to equip ourselves against the evil. This is from the Sunnah. This is from the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِتَسْتَذِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ This is how we uh, 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 detail everything so that the criminals can be exposed. We have to expose the criminals. We have to set guidelines, milestones, that this don't go away from it. Don't go overboard because you're going to go into haram. So the fitan has to be detailed. The Prophet ﷺ he had told us about the Dajjal. And then he said to us, I'm going to tell you something that nobody or no prophet had said it to their people. Why? Because the prophets before they knew that he's not going to come in their era. He's going to come in the era of the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This Dajjal is going to come into the huh, followers of Muhammad Sallallahu The other prophets, they know. That's why they did not give them descriptions as much. Allah did not disclosed to these prophets as much as he disclosed to our prophet Muhammad what was that? simple simple thing to know him. you don't need to be a learned person to know him you know anyone have mubtada or not is he an evator? you don't have to sit with him and you have to listen to him and he's associated with himself no 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 no. this is something easy what? this is Dajjal he's one eyed so that means one eye this is the translation correct it means he's got one eye he's got, the other eye does not see that means Allah has got what? Please go and be careful. Yeah, go on. It's got what? Two eyes. So Allah said, Laysa bi awr. So Allah has got two eyes suitable to His Majesty. He's got two eyes. And the Dajjal has got one eye. And the description of His eye is one which is pushed inside, and that is most likely the the proper according to the narration is the left one this one left one pushed inside and totally closed and it's got like thick layer of uh, of skin on top of it so it's inside and it's totally closed this is called one eyed and the other one which is the right one and the scholars are different which one the right or the left but this is what we believe is the correct is the right one don't worry whether the right or the left you're not going to miss him you're not going to miss him I mean it's going to be very easy to be spotted the other one is popping out. It's like a swelling. Huh? It's called swelling. He said, popping out, like a grape. Imagine like a grape out here. Subhanallah. He's so ugly. <laughs> he looks ugly. If you want to, do you gonna give your daughter to somebody like this? 
No way. Ugly. Yet Allah gives him power. So much power that only Allah does. He commands the clouds and only Allah can command the cloud. Rain to those people who follow him. The one who don't follow him, no rain. Famine. Only, only Allah can do these things. So he's giving some, give him some power. But you have to ask yourself, yeah, we've got his power, but yet this power is unable to fix himself. Still ugly. He can't go to the doctor and put a gun on his head. Come on, make me a, please a surgical operation to change my face and to look different so that the people can recognize me. Huh? He can't do that. He's, un he's helpless. He can't do that. Somebody with this power, I mean, at least he would just fix himself. But he's still ugly with this power. Looking ugly. And this is the, one of the major signs, and this is the only sign which calls you to do the other way from the other signs. The other signs will tell you to come closer to Allah. When you see the beast, when you see the sun rising from the west. If you believe at that time, no, I believe we're not going to help you because hey, this is a phenomenon that will not take place. You've seen the sun rising from the other side. Alas, everybody you're going to believe? No. That belief will not help you. So all major signs, Mahdi and Isa alayhi salam, your Gog and Magog, your Juj and Majuj, the smoke calls you to get closer to Allah. Yet this sign is what? Calls you to go where? Away from Allah. This sign, that's why it's a fitna. He comes with his power and he tells you, if you don't follow me, I'm going to torture you. I'm going to put you in hell. So you'll sign fire. So you might be, oh, I don't want to go to the fire. I'm going to go to the paradise of yours. Then you have followed him. You accept him as a god. He, might, he, he, might, he will tell shayateen to resemble your father and your mother already died. To come out and to say to follow this man. He's your lord. It's a fitna. So the best thing for you is to run and hide. Not to show your face. And the best of places to go to is Mecca and Medina. Go there in Mecca and Medina. He cannot go inside. He will not get you. So the hypocrites will go there. No, Medina, Mecca, they will shake three times and all the munafiqun will be taken out from them. There will be no munafiqun, it's only mu'minun inside the Medina. And the third place is Bait al-Maqdis. Inside the masjid itself, shaitan cannot, sorry, uh, the Dajjal cannot approach you. But the Dajjal, I have spoken about in so many lectures and it takes about a lecture, a full lecture about him. All I need to know is that there are signs I can't miss it. That's number one. The second sign is, which is you can't miss it, is ka, the fa, and the ra. Letter kaf, letter the f, and the letter the r, which is kafara. Or another version, kafir. Written between his eyes. This writing is not the normal writing like it's being tattooed. No, this is writing, Allah's writing. Should we call it a holy writing? Do you understand me? So much, it's only the believer can read it. Yet the disbeliever, even he is a professor, can't read it. The disbeliever can't see it, can't read it. Even he's a professor. And the unlettered, the illiterate believer, he could read it. He never even seen letters, he will be able to see it. Kafara. So imagine, kafir. How are you going to, I'm your God, you're kafir. You can't read between your eyes. And you're one-eyed. Allah's got two eyes. Yet some people will follow him. Well, all of that. Because they've been deceived. Uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you just only for five minutes until the quarter two. I'll finish quarter to 11, inshallah. So I'll stop here and I'll give you questions and answers. So if you have a few questions regarding, if you want to ask about the Dajjal, I've got lots of things about the Dajjal to talk about. So I've got, if you want to talk about the Dajjal, you're talking about that much. Okay? So, um, that's too much. But if you have to ask me about anything, Inshallah, I will give you the answer if I have the answer. Otherwise, I'll say Allah Ta'ala. Anybody? Fadal ya Irfan. Okay. Uh, am I, uh, uh, I going to be going overboard, transgressing if I transgress in the dua? There is transgression in the dua. I have to ask Allah Azza wa Jalla an equivalence for my wrongdoing or for the wrongdoing of that person onto, onto me. So, for example, a person, he swore at you. He said to you, dog. You're allowed to say you, dog, as well. But he said you, dog and pig, you've transgressed. You retaliated and you've gone extra. The pig, 
Why did you say that? You're allowed to say your dog and he is sin because he started it. Now he's asking me about the dua. So this person, he had, let's say, robbed your money, made a fraud. And I went to me dua. Oh Lord, make him to lose his children and his wife to be divorced and to break his back and rob him from all his money. Keep him outside. And <laughs> Best thing, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, to take revenge for me. So Allah will take revenge in the best of ways. But there is no harm if you are feeling that you've been wronged to do like what? Sa'd. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. Whom his dua is fulfilled, as the Prophet said. Miss dua, that's it, you finished. Sa'di was in the province at the time of Umar al-Khattab. He was the imam of a certain masjid. Not certain, he's a, the leader of the province, he's the mayor of that province. So, his kunya is Abu Ishaq. So, the, there was a complaint about him from such and such place, a masjid there. Complaint. So Umar al-Khattab, he had sent to check up on this. And that person, a companion, he went to check and he checked it. And all of them, they said, mashallah, is good. Except for one masjid. This is where the complaint came from. He stood up. He said, well, if you asked us, then I'm going to tell you. He's a person. If he leads us in the prayer, he doesn't know how to lead us. And if he is to go to the fight in the army, he does not give us. The, the, the bold booty injustice and also he does not lead injustice he is tyrant so he's called him accused of tyranny accused him is not being good as well just in when he divide the bold booty and also he is not good to pray the people so Amr Khattab called for Sa'ad to come Sa'ad that's what the claim from Masjid Bani Abs saying that you are doing such and such and such and such he said, as for me, O leader of the believers, you know that I pray with him. And he told me the prayer of the Prophet of Allah. I prolonged the first two rak'ah and shortened the first Allah, second two rak'ahs. As for the wubuti and as for the justice, that's what I do. But he said, O leader of the believers, O Allah, O Allah, if this man's what he had said is a lie, because maybe he said it, maybe he didn't know. But if it's a lie, O Lord, Allahumma, atil umrah. Make his life longer. SubhanAllah, if somebody done something wrong to you, you're going to make a life as well shorter, make him die now. No, make a life to live longer. Wa atil faqra. And make him what? Poor. Wa aridhu lil fitan. And expose him to the fitan. Look at this dua. You think it is nothing. This man, he heard about the dua of Sa'd. Allah made this person to live very long. Became an old man. Imagine he's 80 now. His eyebrows are falling down. And they got gray, even eyebrows. And he's outside in the street. And he is after the women. Imagine an old man doing like this to a woman. Imagine. <laughs> you old man, what are you doing? Nobody's going to look at him. So he said, what's wrong with you, old man? He said, well, asabatni da'wa to sad. I've been hit, struck by the, the supplication of Sa'ad. Alas, I'm finished. Okay, and this man is after women. Allah, if the girls, <laughs> it's an old man. Allah, see, so yeah, this is, I'm just saying, make, make the dua accordingly. Don't make ex excessive dua. Okay? So when somebody, a, a, a thief comes to your house, and he comes with nothing, no weapons, no knife, and, and you want to defend yourself, you can't bring your machine gun, <laughs> That's not correct. Islam will take you responsible for that. You're not allowed. This person came with an anti go machine gun or with a tank or rocket launcher. <laughs> Wipe him out of existence. <laughs> no, it's not allowed in Islam. No. Well done.
He said, Mu'ad, why the Prophet he said, I love you, and this is the hadith I mentioned. Um, why Prophet of Allah said to Mu'ad, I love you? Because the Prophet وسلم, he said, if you love a person, then tell him. Anas said, I, uh, there was a man next to the Prophet of Allah, and then another man passed. He said, Messenger of Allah, by Allah, I love that person. He said, did you tell him? He said, no. He said, go and follow him and tell him. So he followed him and told him, I love you for the sake of Allah. The man replied, may Allah love you for the sake that you love me in his sake. So the Prophet of Allah loved Mu'ad because Mu'ad is a great scholar of the Sahaba. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. He's one of the four whom the Prophet of Allah asked us to recite his recitation, to take the recitation from his mouth. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, whom Hakim ibn Hizam, an old man, used to be a student. And the difference between age, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, and Hakim ibn Hizam is about 30, 40 years. Yet he was holding his camel. You do that to the kid. He's young. He said, well, ينبغي للعالم للحبر أن يعظم. The scholar has to be huh, always respected. So the old man is holding the camel of somebody who's younger than him. Mu'ad al is a great scholar. And the Prophet suddenly chose him to send him to where? To Yemen. Yeah. Imagine a whole country be represented by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Mu'ad al-Jabal. But Mu'ad al-Jabal is a greater scholar than Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. Greatest scholars. And both are students of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So they went all the way to Yemen. They are representing Islam, representing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is he a role? A role? A real person. A person. Uh, was he a real person? Dajjal is a real person and he's still, uh, he's still alive. He's still alive now. We don't know where he is, just like we don't know where is Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are millions, billions of people. We don't know where they are. They're so powerful. But we don't know where they are. They are still digging to get out. But Allah did not give them permission to come out. And the Dajjal is also, he is cuffed as is being seen by some of those who are not Muslim, they embrace Islam. Banu Tamim, Tamim Dari. Hadith Tamim Dari, they've seen him in one of the islands. The, the, the sea took them for a month. We have to be, believe in that because the Prophet told us. There is no such thing that, oh, we've got GPS now these days. We know everything. Is, uh, we know everything. So how come we don't know what is Ya'juj and Ma'juj? They don't have mobiles who could trace the, trace the SIM cards and all of that. I'll tell you what. A good example that these people with this technology, they can't find where is the H-370. Do you know what's that? The Indonesian airplane, which was put down. Or, I don't know, put down or... You know, it's a big, massive plane. They can't find where it is. Disappeared, just thin air, nothing. Tell you what, the scientists, they say, I've just read it recently, we only know 5% of what is in the oceans and the seas. 5%. So 95%, the scientists with all this, mashallah, machines and technology, they don't know. طيب. Any other questions? تفضل يا شيخ عمر. But he will not say it for 40 years. The hadith Prophet he said that he who drank uh, alcohol, his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. We will take it as it is, but it doesn't mean that he has to repeat the prayer. It's not like somebody invalidated his wudu and he makes another prayer. This is that means even your prayer, just like a person who had gone to a soothsayer, Allah will not accept his prayer for 40 days. If he just asked, he didn't really believe the person, he just sat down there. 40 days will not be accepted. So we'll leave it as it is because it's a deterrence. But we do not say to the person, okay, you have to pray another 40 days because you're 40. No. Or, well, don't pray because these 40 days are not going to be accepted. No. He has to pray. And as a punishment, his prayer will not be accepted. But it's not to be invalid. You are doing a prayer now which is not drunk. Do you guarantee that it's accepted? Do you? Nobody can guarantee. Your prayer is valid, will do wise, but nobody knows. And even you're not a drunk, you're not giving to the soothsayer. So you're asking Allah to accept your ibadah. And that's what Ibn Qayyim used to say, I, 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 oh Lord, just, I, I'm just begging you to accept the ibadah from me. One ibadah, one prayer. 
Because we don't know if it's being accepted or not. We mean thrown away and accepted. But remember, Allah will deal with you with justice. Fadal, last question, Khwani. If the father dies before the grandfather, does the children get any inheritance? The children would represent their father unless there are other children. The other children, if they are son, he will block all these grandchildren. So if the, the grandfather has got, is he got only one son or more than one son? If he's got more than one son, then the grandchildren of that person who died from the sons before the, the grandfather, they will not inherit because they will be blocked by that son. Okay? Wa subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.